In Electric Current Through Conductors Part 3, we are going to talk about the cell. The types of cells are the primary cells and the secondary cells. The primary cells cannot be charged again, hence can be used only once. Example, dry cells, alkaline cells, etc. The secondary cells can be charged again, hence can be reused. The chemical reaction in a secondary cell is reversible. Example, lead acid cells, fuel cells, solar cells, etc. Examples of primary cells are the Leclanche cell. In the Leclanche cell, we have a plastic or a glass bottle which is filled with ammonium chloride. And at the center, we are having a carbon rod which is packed with manganese dioxide. The carbon rod acts as a positive terminal and the zinc rod dipped in ammonium chloride acts as a negative terminal in this Leclanche cell. We have the Daniel cell in wherein you have a copper vessel which is filled with concentrated saturated solution of copper sulfate. And this copper vessel acts as a positive terminal. There is a porous spot which dilute acid is filled, half filled in that. And a zinc rod is tipped. The zinc acts as a negative terminal. We have the dry cells which are similar to the Leclanche cell. We have a zinc casing which acts as a negative terminal. And the tip is a carbon rod which acts as a positive terminal. This carbon rod is packed with ammonium chloride and manganese dioxide paste. Examples of secondary cells are the lead acid cell, which is widely used in vehicles and places where heavy load current is required. Fuel cell vehicle, the FCVs, are electric vehicles. Hydrogen is also used as fuel and water is a byproduct. This avoids greenhouse gases produced by gasoline vehicles. Hence, it is eco-friendly. We also have the solar cells, wherein the solar energy is converted to electrical energy. So these are the examples of secondary cells. The fuel cells are in trend now with the electric cars coming in. Let us talk about the electromotive force of a cell, the EMF. So we have a cell here. And this EMF is E or epsilon. We have the potential difference V, current I. So we have I as a current, E is the EMF of the cell, V the potential difference, R is the internal resistance of the cell which is not visible. For any single cell, we have the EMF of the cell e is equal to V plus I into R. So if we rearrange it, then we have V is equal to E minus IR. Now we take the cells in series. So we have series, cells, we have the current going from positive to negative. The total equivalent potential developed is equal to sum of individual EMF plus total product of current and internal resistance. So V is equal to summation EI minus I into summation RI where i goes from 1 to n number of cells advantages of cells connected in series are the damaged cells can be easily detected for displacement the resultant voltage of the cells in series can be increased so it is more now let us uh, connect them in parallel so we have connected the cells in parallel we have the current i1 and i2 bb1 and bb2 are the potential difference so we have for the first cell, now since the cells are in parallel, the V is same, the potential difference is same. For the first cell, V is equal to VB1 minus VB2, which is E1 or epsilon 1 minus I1, R1. So we rearrange the terms to get I1 is equal to E1 minus V upon R1. For the second cell, again we have the potential difference as V, that is equal to VB1 minus VB2 which is equal to E2 minus I2 R2. So if you rearrange the terms, I2 is equal to E2 minus V upon R2. 
Now we have the current I, which gets divided into I1 and I2. So we have I is equal to I1 plus I2. So from the previous equations, if you substitute for I1 and I2, I is equal to E1 minus V upon R1 plus E2 minus V upon R2. So V is equal to, you rearrange the term and keep the V on the left hand side. We get R2 E1 plus R1 E2 upon R1 plus R2 minus I into R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. That's the potential difference. So we can write V is equal to E equivalent minus I R equivalent. And E equivalent is equal to R2 even minus R1 E2 upon R1 plus R2. R equivalent from the equation is R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. So from equation 1 and 2, we divide them and we get E equivalent upon R equivalent is E1 upon R1 plus E2 upon R2. Now the sign of the EMF has to be taken care of. That means if the cell is uh, reversed, then it will become negative. 1 upon R equivalent, we can write it as equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2. So now instead of two cells, if you have more than two cells, then you have 1 upon R equivalent is 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 up to 1 upon Rn. And similarly, we have equivalent upon R equivalent as E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 plus E3 by R3 up to E1 upon Rn. Advantages of these cells connected in parallel is even if the cell is in parallel, the circuit gets damaged, the rest of the circuit will not break. It will keep on working. Dis disadvantages of the cells are when they are connected in parallel, the voltage once developed cannot be increased even if the number of cells are increased. So in summarize, for us, any single cell, we have E is equal to even minus IR. Cells in series, you have V is equal to summation EI minus IR1. Cells in parallel, you have V is equal to E equivalent minus IR equivalent. We have some of the EMFs of cells. So we have Leclanche cell is 1.5 volts, Daniel cell 1.08 volts to 1.09 volts, Dry cell 1.5 volt, lead accumulator 1.9 volt to 2.2 volts. There are many other cells also. So that's all for today. Thank you.